welcome to Walk Like a Hebrew. I'm Jody O'Dell. Hey, Walk Like a Hebrew fans. I am really glad you're listening. This is episode 40, the kickoff to season four, and I'm doing something a little different this season. There are some great topics and interviews on deck. I cannot wait. I will still be sitting down with people and collecting their stories of how they got from there, wherever that was, to here, walking out faith like a true crossed-over Hebrew, following in the actual footsteps of our Messiah. But it's high time I started carrying out one of the original purposes of this podcast, something I've meant to be doing from the start. I want to talk about how to walk like a Hebrew. How do we go about living this set-apart life? What's different about this walk? Where do we even start? So I went to a ladies' retreat this past winter on the Mendocino coast of Northern California, and I sat down with a group of amazing faith and spirit-filled women, and we had a discussion about the Sabbath. We talked about why we keep it, when it is, how we keep it in our different households, and much, much more. Please let me know if you find this episode valuable. I would love your feedback. And of course, if you love it, please tell me so I can do more. All right, in this discussion, we'll hear from Michelle Hawkins, Anna Kaufman, Tamara Anderson, Lori Giletti, Karen Bixby, Pam Custer, and of course, me. Enjoy. Okay, so here we go. Basically, what I'd like to do is have a discussion about the Sabbath for a newbie. Or maybe somebody who's been keeping the Sabbath for a while but just needs to remember why they keep it, you know. Because sometimes we just go along and we just sort of get lazy, right? Mm -hmm. We need to tighten up our walk Mm -hmm. a little bit. Remember Uh, to do Havdala. I was really looking forward to doing Havdala tonight. I know, we forgot, didn't we? I have the candle. We just don't have time. Yeah, we just... (laughs) We can do it right now. How do you how do you have to love? So let's talk about that. One of the things, demonstration for your recording. One of the so I would really like to talk about first why we keep the Sabbath mm-hmm. and why we keep it on Saturday and not Sunday. Mm-hmm. Then I'd like to talk to each of us individually how we do it because I'm sure we all do it differently. Mm-hmm. And then you know have to love. Should we or shouldn't we? And if so, how? Right. Yes. Okay. So um, the Sabbath. Who wants to start? We do it because our Abba says to. Where did he say that? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <Water> places. <laughs> yeah, there. Anna has her Bible out. Good job, Anna. Okay. Exodus so chapter to... 20 for sure. Exodus 20? Yeah. And what's that? The, the Ten that's Commandments. That's the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Um, remember the Sabbath day to set it apart. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Elohim. Do not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days, Yehovah made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, Yehovah blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart. Did you guys notice that out of all the Ten Commandments, there are more words in the Fourth Commandment than all the rest combined? Yes. Like maybe by triple? <laughs> Except think, for maybe the first one. The first one has quite a bit, too. That's yes. true. That's maybe true. because he knew we'd have the most questions about it. No. And it's, what's the first word? Mm-hmm. Remember. Because we will forget. forget. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So what would you say to somebody who said, how do we know that the seventh day is Saturday? All right. Good question. That, the Anna's answer... Ready. The word has the answer here. So in Genesis chapter 2, this is the first time we ever see the Sabbath ever mentioned. Um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, it says, In the seventh day, Elohim completed his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Now he blessed the seventh day and set it apart, because on it he rested from all his work which Elohim in creating had made. Well, and it says that in Exodus 20, verse 8 as well. It says, the seventh day. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give you any leeway there. Mm -hmm. But what would you say to somebody who said, the calendar's changed so many times. How do we know that Saturday is still the seventh day? Like, maybe it's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, maybe we lost track somewhere. (laughs) Maybe we did. It is possible. But, you know, I mean, even in our modern day calendars, they still have Sunday as the first day of the week. And they have for a long time. They have for a long time. Mm -hmm. I I don't know the history in it or anything, but I would say that it is a good indication Mm -hmm. that they're still, we're still on the right seventh day. So, So. yeah, this is interesting too. When you look at all those other calendars out there and you Mm -hmm. find this with, oh man, I can't remember, but 
I think they've confirmed this with like 10, 12 other calendars from other nations and languages and all that. Mm. And they find this pattern of the seventh day. I wish I could remember all the, all the words and the languages. But yeah, they find like the seventh day. It's called Saturn or Shaba or Saba. So it's really interesting to just like looking at all these other calendars and seeing like how they define their seventh day mm. and seeing that majority of them are actually aligned with Saturday as what we would observe with the Gregorian calendar. Now, I've heard that the Jewish people, the Israelite people, whatever you want to call them, Mm -hmm. Semitic peoples, let's say, for all time have been very precise keepers of history Mm -hmm. and that they have kept records and they pass them down orally Mm -hmm. and they're very precise about doing it correctly for a very long time. Mm-hmm. That's how we got our scriptures. That would be another indicator. Yeah. Right. And, and they kept the big. And our Messiah certainly didn't have anything to say um, that we know of, arguing that that was the wrong day. You're right. Exactly. And nobody ha- argues that we've lost track of time since his time. Yeah. Right. They <laughs> argue that it was before mm-hmm. his time. Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't know. Maybe he wouldn't decide to pick a fight about it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah. I think if he's, well, he wasn't shy about saying what something was wrong, was he? No, mm-hmm. he was not. They were going to scoot over that huge, yes. that yeah. a huge thing to say. She posed the question on what do we say to those who would argue that perhaps we're not actually observing the correct oh, yeah. seventh day? Like, and what if we've lost track of it throughout mm-hmm. history? How can we do if, that? Well, like, what if, what if somewhere we lost track of mm-hmm. the seventh day? And then restart it somewhere along the way again, and sure. it turns out it's Wednesday. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. This is an argument that I've heard. I've heard it too. Okay. Mm-hmm. I just tell them that Yeshua kept the Sabbath. That's what Tamara just said. Mm-hmm. And um, when the disciples were dispersed, they went all over the world, mm-hmm. and they kept the Sabbath. They did. Mm-hmm. You know, you could say... You uh, might lose it in one place, but yeah. not every place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that too. Ooh. Yeah, good point. You could say, how do, how do we know that red is red and blue is blue? Right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, okay, that's getting really? a little way deep, but good <laughs> point. I mean, like, it's what we were taught, right? Yeah. 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 And so you go based off of what you know. You can't mm-hmm. really go based off of what you don't know. It's Other than point. that, you just, I mean, you just Definitely carry on the best you can. Mm-hmm. And if you keep questioning certain things like that, saying, was I taught the right thing? You get so far into the weeds. Yeah. yeah, you lose yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've gotten into like, the weeds like instantly. Like we just go right in. Right? <laughs> I mean, if everything's a lie. Yeah. Wow. I mean, is blue pagan? <laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> Some people think so. I mean, you, you can get you can you can just get all out, all out yeah. insane and let it make you crazy. But yeah. So ultimately, other than the fact that the Bible actually says it. I want to talk about how so many of the people who follow Yeshua as their Savior mm-hmm. are keeping Sunday instead of Saturday. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that, okay? Well, we have documentation for that, right? The Catholic Church saying that they say that they changed the day. But where'd they get the authority for that? They gave it to themselves. Their paperwork says that they have the same authority as Yeshua. But they didn't. it didn't happen overnight. No. Mm-hmm. It took a long, long, long time for that to happen. Mm-hmm. A long time from when? From the first century. How many years? 260-some before. There was an actual, the very first church split mm. was over the Sabbath versus Sunday and Easter versus the Passover. Mm-hmm. And that was called the Quarter Deciman. You probably know about that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And my it brain. was the first real church split. And the, I like to say Catholic bishops, but they weren't Catholic at the time. The Gentile church had grown exponentially, and Jewish congregations <laughs> were getting smaller and smaller and smaller because they were persecuted. The Gentile churches were getting bigger and bigger and bigger because they weren't being pers- persecuted because they were going along. And they were syncretized with the rest of the pagan world to bring the pagans in. Mm-hmm. They compromised the actual They were seeker-sensitive. They were seeker-sensitive. <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun. There okay? is nothing new under the sun. And so it wasn't until Polycrates, right? Mm-hmm. It was the uh, Gentile bishops from the Roman side and the last disciples of John, mm. who lived up in Asia Minor, the book of Revelation, right? Mm-hmm. To the churches of Asia Minor. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. It was those churches 
that hung with the Sabbath and with the Passover. And the bishops finally just said, okay, that's enough. We're taking over. You guys are anathema. And they booted them out. But they stuck to their guns and said, because they had been personally discipled by John, Mm -hmm. and the Roman bishops were personally trying to get away from all that. So they stuck with it, and they were persecuted into oblivion. It was because people were trying to disassociate with the Jews. Mm -hmm. But the churches of Asia Minor, which were also Gentiles, Mm -hmm. right, hung with the doctrines of John. Mm -hmm. And when you look at that section in, in Revelation, which John wrote... They had been warned that this was going to happen and not to compromise. Mm. That's what that whole first three chapters is about. Sense, yeah, definitely in Don't context. compromise. No. So that is why we have Sunday worship exactly. instead of Shabbat worship. Yes. I don't think a lot of people in the modern Christian church know. No, they don't. I didn't. I was just going to ask, what do modern Christians believe about Sunday worship versus mm-hmm. Sabbath worship? I didn't know there was a difference. I didn't know that Sabbath was a different day than Sunday. Mm -hmm. Uh, When I saw Sabbath's rest or, you know, words such like like that in the Bible, I I just assumed it was Sunday. Me too. Mm -hmm. And no one told me any different. Then I met some people who believed differently, and I thought, they are just crazy. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I didn't didn't think that my friends who were Seventh-day Adventists knew what they were talking about. Mm But it never even dawned on me. I don't even think I knew back then that the Jewish people had a different day. I mean, because there was just no knowledge, you know, in my circles. You were just in your own little bubble. I was. I liked my bubble. It was was very nice. (laughs) Yes. Well, I myself (laughs) still have the question (laughs) pending as to whether or not there's anything at all wrong with Sunday worship. Like, shouldn't we be worshiping every day? Sure. You know? Like, you're supposed to rest on Shabbat. Mm-hmm. Very, very good point. The problem comes when you call Sunday the a Sabbath. 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 I mm-hmm. have yeah. a lot of friends that do that. Yes. You know, I'll call them on Sunday for something. You guys want to go out? You want to go do something? They'll be like, oh, no, we're doing our Sabbath rest, or we're doing our Sabbath this or that. And I just kind of go, hmm, yeah, okay. All right. The first couple times I would say, oh, you mean your Sunday rest or your Lord's Day rest or something like that? You know, try to get some better terminology. Well, even being raised in the church, though, I don't think that it even, like, registered with me. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of Sabbath being for rest. Mm -hmm. You know, all I I knew is that you go to church. Yeah. it's But beyond that, like... We still went out to eat and see our the <laughs> mow the lawn, <laughs> mow the lawn, yeah. the house work. So yeah, the, so and the the church that we grew up in was very good about you didn't go out, you didn't buy things on Saturday. It was kind of like Saturday night was a home night mm-hmm. with your family. You mm-hmm. weren't out doing things, and then Sunday, yeah, no going, no buying stuff, no going out. It was a good observance of Sabbath, but. Yeah. So they still started, though, on Saturday night, mm-hmm. not yeah. morning. Yeah, and but it wasn't huh. as... I don't remember them saying, you know, that the Sabbath is beginning at sundown. It was just kind of like a, we're getting ready for Sabbath, and mm-hmm. so we want you guys home. You know, if you're going to have hang out with your friends, let's hang out here at the house. You know, try to center mm-hmm. around the house. So. Interesting. So, yeah, but it was, it was we had to go through a, a transition of, you know, me saying, well, you can't really call Sunday... Sabbath, because Sabbath is Sabbath. And then, especially my mom, she switched very quickly to calling it like the Lord's Day. She would say, okay, Mm -hmm. well, I'll call Sunday the Lord's Day then instead. I was like, oh, never mind. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, mom. Just one step at a time. So I've always wondered, for those of you who, I don't know, you were only like, what, 10 or 12 when your family started keeping the Sabbath? 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so it was a journey. So, yeah. yeah. teen. I want to know what your first Sabbath was like. <laughs> Mine was hilarious. Yeah. It was pathetic and ridiculous and hilarious. And I remember, so I literally, my husband took our daughters because he mm-hmm. wasn't, he was like, that woman that told you about Sabbath, she's nuts. And we're not doing that. And I was like, I'm doing it. And he said, fine, I'm taking the kids and we're going to go buy a bunch of stuff and build <laughs> something. And we're going to, we're, we're working. It's our work day. Right? We got to get stuff done. I didn't know anything about preparation day. Yeah. (laughs) I did not prepare at all. I just, I looked at the clock and I said, oh, 
okay, here I go. I'm going to rest. <laughs> and I sat on the couch. I was afraid to get up. I didn't know if turning on the water was considered work. <laughs> what do I eat? I didn't prepare anything. My house was filthy. I sat there on the couch like this. <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? I was like, I got to do this. Oh, I can't. Mm -hmm. I got to do that. Oh, I can't. And I remember thinking, this can't be what God wants. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. got to be something I'm missing. Mm -hmm. And the first one was just absolutely torturous. Mm -hmm. So am I the only one who had mm -hmm. some kind of odd... No, I would have to say I'm still trying to figure it out. I mean, it's still, it's still confusing because at a, as a stay-at-home mom, everything is like my regular work. You know, so when your yeah. child wets the bed, do you leave it till the next day? Like, yeah, no. You know, no. like you've got to do something. You That's know? a legitimate option. That is a legitimate, yeah. <laughs> it's legitimate right. work to do on the Sabbath day. Yeah, but, we're not suggesting you don't feed your baby or change your diaper on Shabbat, <laughs> you know? But my very first Sabbath was kind of accidental. So I was exploring and trying to learn about keeping Torah, but I wasn't really thinking a whole lot about any specific commandment necessarily and I went on to 119 Ministries and sent an email to somebody local because I didn't have like a fellowship group mm -hmm. and so she got back to me right away and she was all excited to meet me and she says okay how about we meet at the coffee shop on Saturday morning so I show up at the coffee shop and I had all my kids with me my husband was working and I got them you know a treat from the coffee shop and I sat there and talked to this lady for hours, and we had such a good conversation. And I thought about the fact that she's not buying anything. And then we got done talking. Well, we weren't done talking, but she goes, Oh, I gotta go. I got Shabbat Fellowship at my house. <laughs> and I was like, Huh? <laughs> she goes, Oh, well, do you wanna come? I didn't wanna invite you unless I knew you first. <laughs> oh my goodness. You were being vetted. Like, yeah. It was an audition. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> Throughout that day, it just kind of dawned on me that, like, oh. that's why I shouldn't buy anything. Mm. Yeah. It's Sabbath. Yeah. <laughs> All right, going with the buying. Okay, I've got a funny story with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, you know, because, like, you come out of the Christian church and everything, and it's still okay to do your works and all that, you know, <laughs> as long as you still have your fellowship. So... Anyways, for us, um, on Saturdays, I remember that was just a normal, regular day. People would wake up, and we would do all the cooking on Saturday. We would make all the errands and stuff like that. But then we realized in Scripture, oh, my goodness, we're not supposed to be buying on the Sabbath. So what my parents did <laughs> to keep it kosher, um, they bought those uh, Visa cards that you can get at Walmart where you could pre-purchase <laughs> the cards. So you can get you can buy one of those 100 cards, and sure enough, you have $100 to spend any time of the day. So I remember this, like there are Saturdays where my dad would want to go to the dump, or I would have a race that day, and it's like, oh, but don't worry, it's all kosher because we already prepaid yeah, for paid these for cards, <laughs> and we can just use those on the Sabbath. <laughs> Anyways, so... That yeah. reminds me of, of the Jewish custom of selling their their leaven mm -hmm. to a gentile right. for unleavened bread for <laughs> unleavened bread and then buying it back when they were done uh -huh. <laughs> I mean yeah I would say it took like you were saying it was a journey it really it was kind of like the first couple Sabbaths just didn't go well because I didn't know about preparation day and <laughs> yes. um and finally, you know, I started asking questions of the our old uh, rabbi's wife and, you know, some of the other ladies and like, how do you guys do this? How does this, how does this work? And they told me about preparing and um, I was telling Anne a little bit about what a, a different person I was then. But one of the things was that we only drank distilled water. And so um, if you are only drinking distilled water and only using that water for everything, if you don't have water on Sabbath, it starts to be a real problem. So that was one of those things that I started being like, okay, if I'm sticking to this, only drinking distilled water and only having distilled water, I had to prepare ahead of time to have it because invariably we would always run out of water on Sabbath. <laughs> and I'm like, what am I going to drink? But of course I couldn't just drink out of the tap because that's who I was then or anything else. I had to have distilled water. But mm -hmm. um, anyway, that's a whole nother story. Um, yeah. So preparation day became so important to realize and think about all the different things. Oh, the food I'm bringing or uh, this or that, or, you know, if we have some family thing, I'm a lazy preparation person. And so <laughs> I just make the same food for every single thing. And the one thing I loved, and my kids know this about me, is I love pancakes. So my first few months of doing Sabbath, 
on Friday, I would make lots and lots of pancakes. <laughs> and we would have pancakes for breakfast <laughs> that were already made. And then we just kind of heat up some syrup and dump them on there or whatever. And then pancakes for lunch or, you know, whatever. <laughs> just the same food. Wow. Taco pancakes. I got a little bit more creative, like, as the years went along. Right. But that was what I wanted to eat. And it was just kind of our thing. <laughs> pancakes. <laughs> So how about you, Karen? What was your first Sabbath like? I had all these revelations while I was up at our cabin in the mountains. And the kids and Greg had gone home early, so I was there by myself. And then a friend of mine came from uh, Arizona that I had known since I was 19. And um, she had secretly been studying about Shabbat and had stopped it with some friends in, in Bakersfield on her way up to our cabin. And we're saying, oh, yeah, I'm going up to see my friend. She's a Lutheran. And they're like, oh, don't mention any of this to your friend that's a Lutheran, or she probably won't be your friend anymore. <laughs> so anyway, long story short, you know, I did discover she had some things, and I discovered while she wasn't looking and started reading all this stuff. And I'm like, this is what I've been waiting for. This, I know this is what I'm supposed to do. Okay. So my first two Sabbaths were with her. So it was pretty easy because I didn't yeah. have to worry about, you, you know. On yeah, I was, you know. You were on vacation and you yeah. had some somebody to show you how to do it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And as far as, you know, eating and stuff like that on the Sabbath, you know, it's like open the refrigerator and grab something and eat it. <laughs> I didn't care. You yeah. know, it's like when your family's not there, who cares about having a big meal or anything? If you're hungry, you yeah. just pick something out. You don't, no preparation. And it was all good. So, How about you, Tamara? Ours is unique. And I, I it's too long of a story to get to how we ended up with our first in our first Sabbath observation. But um, we spent our first Shabbat at Messiah Fellowship oh. a day after we discovered Torah. <laughs> like the next day? The next day. <laughs> so, I mean, literally Friday afternoon, we're like, oh, I, we think this is true. Yeah. I emailed them because I miraculously found the 119 Fellowship Finder, wow. which I didn't even know what that awesome. was. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And the and Bill or Gretchen, who knows which, you never really know which one's returning the emails. Uh, probably. Email says, we're in Texas, but you're welcome to come. Here's the address. Come bring food. So we just showed up. Now that night, Matt had to work because he was working Friday nights. And so the kids and I just kind of sat around. I looked for videos on what other people do on Shabbat. And um, we ate stuff out of the fridge and woke him up at noon so we could get to Folsom by two. And that was our first Shabbat. Awesome. I'm still working on the whole preparation thing. Mm. I'm not good at it. (laughs) That's where grace comes in, right? Right. (laughs) For us, it was um, pretty quick. And I knew nothing. Yeah, very. Absolutely nothing, really. So it was, you know, it's funny too to spend your first Shabbat with all these. Well, there weren't that many people there, but there was some, and they're asking us all these questions. <laughs> You're like, I have no idea. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know if I was there. You, your first I one. don't think so. No. You know, how did you discover this? Oh yeah, we um, always want to know. <laughs> and what? How do you feel about Christmas? Oh, you know, gosh. and all these. I mean, it was a lot of questions. And and isn't one nineteen ministries great? I don't. No, I just looked at them yesterday. I just, I just found, found a map. That's all I found is a map. <laughs> I don't awesome. even know how. And, um, but yeah, it was an awesome way to spend your my first Shabbat. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I spent weeks trying to figure out what they were talking about that day. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and you came back. And I came you back. You did. That's a miracle in itself. Yes, we, I mean, we came back the next week and no one was there. Oh, no. But there was a note on the door saying oh. where they were. Oh, good. Okay. You know. <laughs> and then I no. met more people. That's when I, I think we met. That's, that's a good lesson, though, mm-hmm. that when we have new people come to our fellowship, don't, don't assume. ask them a bunch of questions. Do you have any questions? Mm. You know, maybe that would be yeah. a better approach. Yeah. Yeah. But don't assume that people yeah. Yeah. already Just know because everything. they're there. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's, it's very true. Yeah. 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 Because, good. yeah, I think a lot of times... We don't know much of anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, my husband discovered Preparation Day. You know, he was Chef Boy Odell, right? <laughs> Michael has a management gift where I would go to work on Fridays. Well, and God had given him a job where he had Fridays and Saturdays off. And he just got that job not too long before we started keeping Torah. Mm-hmm. 
you know, I always struggled during the week, the regular week to get all the homeschooling done and keep the house clean and have, you know, dinner ready. Well, preparation day was just like his dream come true. <laughs> so I literally, I mean, I would go to work on Fridays. He would have, he would have all the kids. I'd go to work cleaning somebody else's house and I'd come home at two o'clock and the house would be spotless, the yard would be mowed, the garden would be tended, the children would all be happy, all the schoolwork would be done, and all the cooking for the entire weekend yeah. was ready. And he was drinking a beer. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's a dream husband. I'm you know, telling you. <laughs> he just, I mean, this, is, this was what he lived for. Yeah. You know, <laughs> doing gifting. stuff like that. It was his gifting. At first, when we first started keeping the Sabbath, he was like, this really sucks. Because we didn't know anything about Preparation Day. We didn't do any preparation. And it was like, man, I'm hungry. Why didn't we think about making some food? You know, why didn't we clean up the house? Why didn't we do the laundry? Why didn't mm -hmm. any of this stuff get done? All the chores are staring me in the yeah. face. So one of the things that I would like to discuss is, like, this is a pet peeve of mine. The Bible is very clear. On the sixth day, bake what you will bake and boil what you will boil. Do not go out and get manna. Mm -hmm. Do not do it because mm -hmm. you'll be cursed. Mm -hmm. And yet, even now, even among my very dear friends and mentors and family and all that, we're still cooking yeah. on Shabbat, mm -hmm. right? This is one of the things that I personally... Now, now this, is, this is a caveat. Just because I'm convicted of something doesn't mean everybody else has mm -hmm. to be convicted of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But to me, it seems pretty clear. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is what the sixth day is for. Mm -hmm. And it's laid out for us. And it was a test. Remember? Yeah. I am going... Do you, do you know where that's at? Yeah. It's it, in Exodus chapter 16. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Read that. Okay. Um, all right. So just starting in chapter... Or in verse uh, 23, Exodus chapter 16. And that's just exactly what you quote where it says, And he said to them, this is Moshe, This is what Yahweh has said. Tomorrow is a rest, a Sabbath, set apart to Yahweh, this which you bake... That which you bake, bake, and that what you cook, cook. And lay up for yourselves all that is left over to keep it until the morning. Okay, so, and they laid it up until morning, as Moshe commanded, and it did not stink, and no worm was in it. Mm -hmm. And Moshe said, eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to Yahweh. Today you do not find it in the field. Gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Shabbat, there is none. And this is where the test comes out, what you were talking about. And it came to be... That some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather, but they found none. And Yahweh said to Moshe, How long shall you refuse to guard my commandments and keep my Torah? See, because Yahweh has given you the Sabbath, therefore he has given you bread for two days on the sixth day, which is the preparation day, what we were talking about. Let each one stay in his place. Do not let anyone go out on his place on the seventh day. Same with firewood, too. Yeah, same with firewood. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, because I always do prepare food ahead of time. And then, you know, nine times out of ten, it's something that goes in a crock pot and the crock pot gets turned on. Mm -hmm. um, so just at my house, that's what I've done that just helps us function. If we have <clears throat> if we have Shabbat, you know, the crock pot goes to Shabbat with us or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But I recently um, was at the Wetzel's and they didn't even heat their food up. And I thought, wow, how nice, like, to just have a place where they have, that's what they've decided to guard guard Sabbath at their home, and I just thought it was beautiful, mm -hmm. a beautiful way. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't legalistic. It wasn't, you know, whatever. But Shannon said, "I'll prepare all the food. You know, you don't have to bring anything." Because mm -hmm. she knew that I would probably bring a crock pot, and that would probably be <laughs> offensive to, you know. Yeah. So, but I just thought that was nice the way she did it. Yeah, just, we had an instant purposeful. pot, an instant pot that was programmable. Oh yeah. So I would load it up. The night Friday before. afternoon, yeah. yeah, and program it to start cooking at like five, six a.m. Mm -hmm. And then by the time everybody was hungry around noon on Shabbat, Their food was ready. whatever it was it was, was ready. Yeah. yeah, you know that's cool. And we didn't have to do any work, and it was still hot. I don't think there's anything wrong. You plug in your crock mm -hmm. pot, yeah, mm -hmm. before the Sabbath starts. But then mm -hmm. you know you have to make sure it's not going to burn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But still, it's the it's the actually getting up on a Saturday morning and. And starting it, yeah. Yeah. Well, the other... So, go ahead. Do oh, you have something? I was just going to say, like, you can look at this example even in creation itself. Mm -hmm. For six days, Yahweh created the heavens and the earth. On the seventh day, he rested from creating. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the whole baking and cooking thing, 
keeping I think it's important to keep that in mind is just like a lot of baking and cooking and as we would know being wives of the home <laughs> it takes a lot of creating to do yeah as far as just like okay what am I going to do what am I going to plan for what ingredients am I going to put together and mm-hmm. so I think that's another indicator kind of too culinary delight am I creating yes today? yeah exactly all the, and then all the details and yeah. you know stuff like that and but, the cleanup don't so forget what about the dishes. creating what about creating it the day before yeah and it's That's already created way. when your crock pot right. plugs in the next day. Yeah, yeah, see, perfect. See, and and I I know there are a lot of Orthodox Jews who think that even flipping on a light switch, exactly. right, tearing, yeah. the toilet, <laughs> tearing the toilet paper, I yeah, know. buying kosher toilet paper in Israel that's already been pre-torn. Yes. Oh, <laughs> but what about yeah. opening the fridge? Right, because you're turning on a light. Your light, it's yeah. a spark. You're lighting mm. a fire on Shabbat. Well, they have biblical precedent for yeah. that mm-hmm. and each community has their own traditions mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i try not to be too critical of them because yeah. they're the ones that actually taught me how to keep yes. that it's, right. not, it's not a matter of being critical it's just understanding just what they question. do why they do I it am. what do i do and what do i do exactly yeah. Yeah. you know the explanation for that is in the sador right i I've probably <laughs> read it it is i mean that's that. i don't know but yeah. anyway um the spiritual aspect of it is what really what I really love Mm -hmm. because the Sabbath is is where we're all supposed to be headed all of the feasts put us towards that all Mm -hmm. everything is Mm -hmm. supposed to put us towards that the sixth day is preparation day and it's a very spiritual thing you know we're headed for the millennium the Mm -hmm. long rest and then there's also the aspect of the exodus where God destroyed an entire nation so that they could have a Sabbath Mm -hmm. that's pretty severe (laughs) Yeah, that's why the Israelites were taken into captivity in Babylon because right. they didn't give the land its Sabbath, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And they had seventy years of captivity in mm-hmm. Babylon. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it seems like the Sabbath is a pretty big deal well, to God. The, the mm-hmm. Sabbath for 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 Egypt was very costly. It was. They would not let his people rest, mm-hmm. and that's why he came. Mm-hmm. So it was because they had no rest that God came and destroyed Egypt mm-hmm. and took them out. That's a That's lot to think about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what does it look like for our children then? Mm-hmm. If creating is not necessarily the thing to do. I don't know about your guys' kids, but that's all my kids do is like create, create, yeah. create. Right. <laughs> you know? You know yeah, on, a, on a practical level, the thing is, is that God didn't tell us those things. Mm-hmm. He left mm-hmm. that up to us to mm-hmm. figure out. I don't know about... Okay, so I, I know that in... Orthodox Judaism, they have 39 things that you cannot do on the Sabbath. Some of those include sewing a seam, tearing a seam, tearing anything, because you're destroying something. Destroying is the opposite of creating. It's still the the process, right? Um, what else? Do you remember what any of those 39 no. things oh, are? There's so yeah. many steps that you can take. They're, yeah, yeah carrying a key. Yeah. Carrying a, oh, carrying a burden right. outside of your place. Right. Yeah. Nehemiah Gordon jokes about how you can carry a couch up and down your stairs all day long, but you can't carry a key to the neighbor's house. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's true. Mm-hmm. It's true. And it's, you know, it's so but they've funny. All, <laughs> it is funny, but they have all worked this out together. They have. And decided on... This is how we're going to do this. Right. And I think that's fabulous. It is. And if yes. our congregations did more of that, yeah. we'd have more community and unity. And that, I, that's what I was going to say, too, is that a lot of keeping Sabbath is about the um, the standards that you set in your own home. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think it's so beautiful yes. that it can be completely your day now. Um, because of some of the things that happen in our home, and especially with my husband, who um, gets very agitated and he's not really keeping Sabbath like he should, um, gets very agitated if dishes and different things start piling up during Sabbath. And it's something that has, has been very hard for him. If, you know, I say, well, we're trying to keep Sabbath, but, um, I just felt impressed a few years ago that just like the Levites continue to serve in the house of the Lord, there are things of service that sometimes we have to perform. Mm, And so on Sabbath, I have, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of mess that needs to be picked up just mm-hmm. to keep peace in our home. And mm-hmm. what I've started doing, and my kids all, this goes, falls under kids, they know what I'm saying when I say, does anyone have a willing heart to serve on Shabbat? 
And that's what I say. And the kids will just kind of look around and they'll see if there's a mess, something that we can quickly do to serve our family, serve daddy most of the time on Shabbat to keep his heart more Mm -hmm. peaceful or, you know, in our case, whatever. So, and it was funny. I had a friend over recently and I said something along those lines and right away, you know, couple of kids went and, you know, started doing things. And she was like, what just happened? Is it a Sabbath? And I had to kind of just explain to her that this was a heart attitude and not everybody got up. There was only like two people who got up and did stuff. So you're the not other forcing people, them to do it. I'm not forcing them to do it. I'm asking, do you have a willing heart to serve? your God and serve your family mm. in this case. And, and if you don't have a willing heart, please don't get up. Mm-hmm. And do something. Right. I don't want to make it, but you know, we can have those individual things in our family that help Sabbath go more peacefully, but are also still honoring to him. If we have, you know, just to function or do something like that. So I know that that's one of the beautiful things I find about Sabbath is that every family can have some of those different things. Though I have often wished that we, I had more of the long, the long keeping of Sabbath that the Jews do with mm-hmm. all of those mm-hmm. traditions. In, traditions. Yes. Yeah, basically in my blood that would make it just easier. You know, there, there's so many things that mm-hmm. would never even be an issue if it was a part of well, like my you said, culture we, and my family. Well, like more of a community and we did make yeah. some agreed upon lists. Yeah, do them together. Things. Well, it's just like Torah. It's just like... You know, understanding mm-hmm. the, the instructions of Torah. And we it, do kind of do it, that it, already. You know, I mean, yeah. like, for example, us, so this is something my husband brings up all the time. He's like, well, you guys say you're not going to have any work, but all I see is you guys going to some place that you've rented on Shabbat. You're spending hours setting up, practicing music, and then you're doing work to, to clean up whatever food's been cleaned up and all this. I'm like, we don't see it that way. We are... Mm-hmm. I am so happy to go spend three or four hours doing music on Shabbat. Right. It's my favorite thing. Yeah, you know that just makes me happy. Stuff. It's not yes, regular. and that's what it's I've said special. to him too. That's what I've said. It's a yeah. different kind of it, observing yeah, really and doing is. things. Because you and look so. at the priests and so forth. I mean, mm-hmm. they were working like yes, working they're Shabbat. busy. Well, it's a mitzvah too, and one of the things that the Jews say is not just permissible but actually commanded mm-hmm. is to do mitzvah mm-hmm. on Shabbat. Mm-hmm. So if you're serving, yeah. that's a mitzvah. If you're making your home peaceful, that's mm-hmm. a mitzvah. Mm-hmm. It, there's different ways of looking at it. But yeah. I, like you say, I would love to have lived, grown up in a community where mm-hmm. it was just as natural as breathing Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Everybody's to do these things. So, and if you have them set up ahead of time, then it is nice. Because mm-hmm. like I said, right? if you, you know, when you're keeping Torah, you already know the boundaries. Mm-hmm. So if you want to do something communal... And have those things set up. And isn't that easy? You don't have to guess. Oh, is this is this okay or is yeah, this not okay? You already know. You already know where the boundary is. All right. On that I note, like two things I want to discuss. Number one, the Sabbath as a sign. Ooh. Okay. Mm-hmm. The second thing, so that I don't forget, is about how we all keep the Sabbath in our own homes. Mm-hmm. Just an example of a typical Sabbath. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to read that verse about the it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation, mm-hmm. so that so that they know what we're talking about. Like, right. Why don't we do that as exactly. an intro? All right, ah, here we go. Yeah, so basically, I'm reading here in Exodus chapter 31, and I'll read verses 16 and 17. This is where it talks about the Shabbat being the sign, and it says here, and the children of Israel shall guard the Shabbat to perform the Shabbat throughout their generations as the everlasting covenant between me and the children of Israel it is a sign forever for in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed now correct me if I'm wrong I don't think there's anywhere else in the Torah where Yahweh emphasizes that this commandment specifically of guarding the Shabbat is a sign for him to see our diligence and our covenant with him with Mm -hmm. our creator I think you may be right. I don't know for sure. You're talking about just in the Torah? Not as far as just like specific commandments. Yeah. I think, that I think that this is, is the, the most specific one. That yeah. I think of. One of the things that we always talked about, especially when we first started keeping the Sabbath, when Yeshua returns, how's he going to know who his people are? Mm. Let me be on the obvious, right? Well, here it is. It says he's going to be looking for the people who are displaying the sign, mm-hmm. right? It's like having a sign in the window, you oh, know, the menorah, in the, window. the menorah in the window, or, you know, the, the yellow star or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, it's a, it's a sign. It's something for him to look for, to recognize his people. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. What are, are there other signs? What are the other signs? Mm-hmm. Think about the Shema. 
Oh yeah, that's right. It's a sign between mm-hmm. yeah, on your arm and on your on the yeah your forefront hand. of your head. Yeah. Can I interject? <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Denise. Denise. Hello. Isaiah 56. Yeah. Isaiah 56. Yeah. What verse? One through eight. One through eight. That's also talking about the Shabbat too. Yeah. She said, not just for Israel, but also the people who join right. themselves. No. Yeah, who grafted the foreigner. Yeah. So there's like six verses here in Isaiah chapter 56, where it says, Thus says Yahweh, guard right ruling and do righteousness, for near is my deliverance to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who becomes strong in it, guarding the Shabbat, lest he profane it and guarding his hand from doing any evil. And let not the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to Yahweh speak, saying, Yahweh has certainly separated me from his people. Nor let the eunuch say, Look, I am a dry tree. For thus said Yahweh to the eunuchs who guard my Shabbats, and have chosen what pleases me and are holding on to my covenant. To them I shall give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I give them an everlasting name that is not cut off. Also the sons of the foreigner who join themselves to Yahweh to serve him and to love the name of Yahweh to be his servants, all who guard the Shabbat and not profane it. And are holding on to my covenant. Yeah. Well, you want us to just tell a little bit about our Sabbaths? Yes. Whatever, before otherwise... you fall asleep. Yes, <laughs> before I fall asleep. Um, so we uh, have a bunch of kids, and they're all teens right now. And so for us, Sabbath is, it's very easy for the Sabbath to kind of get crowded out by busyness. And when people are playing sports, and when there's all these other things happening, um, it's like it happens and all of a sudden before you know it, there's like, I have a game today or this or that, you know, and it's like you have to say, wait, what is going on? And I thought it was really great. Last Sukkot, my kids were like, mom, this is crazy. We've really got to get back to having Sabbath as a family. And I was like, yes, I agree completely. (laughs) And so we've just been the last few months being more purposeful about making sure that it's you know, nothing happening, that it's, we have dinner together Friday night. We haven't <clears throat> been getting Havdala together of that often, but <laughs> if we remember, um, but pretty much we just, we have our little family traditions. We of course eat different food than pancakes now. But, um, <laughs> we have some favorites. I'm like in the wintertime, it's a lot of soups. And then in the summertime we do just big salads. So I'll make all the stuff ahead of time. If it's like egg salad or tuna salad or, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff goes on bread. Breakfast is normally something that doesn't have to be cooked. It's normally cold cereal. And then we have whatever prepared for Oneg for at fellowship. And then evening normally is just a light meal because we're not that hungry. And then after sundown, the kids are up making normally pancakes or something. <laughs> <laughs> they have to make up for it. Huh? Yes. Pancakes so, but that's kind of, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So that's kind of what it looks like. And then normally Saturday night is a really just kind of having people over. Lots of times we end up doing music or just having random teenagers over at the house playing sports and stuff. So that's kind of what it looks like at our house. My process. house is different because it's just it's Greg and I, and and um, Greg kind of goes in and out of, of keeping Shabbat. So he's, he's definitely not um, as committed as I am. So um, sometimes Friday evenings we'll we'll have a meal sometimes he'll be gone or something so you know my preparation day is just getting ready for shabbat and looking forward to seeing my shabbat family i'll tell you one thing i really miss and of course we all miss some of our people that have left you know of california but when we were um living on uh, bill and gretchen's property we would always do air shabbat with them Mm -hmm. and so Greg would always do that when we moved, and we didn't have that that influence, you know, of Bill saying, "Oh, see you tonight, Greg," you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we, you know, we'd always end up having discussions and so forth, and mm-hmm. music and so forth. And I always thought when we were doing those things together that you know he might be more committed to start doing it, but mm-hmm. so it hasn't happened yet. So I just keep keep, keep doing what I do and do what you do. Keep and, and he always he always teases me because. Um, you know, sometimes they're like, like you said. Sometimes there's a bunch of dishes in the sink on mm-hmm. Friday night, and he says, "Well, I know it's Shabbat because they won't get cleaned up until Saturday night when you get home." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, that's right." <laughs> it's definitely different for me because 
I had all of my revelations about this and happened really quickly, and, and I've been very committed to it. And I never eased into it. It was all or nothing. My husband and kids thought I was crazy. And, you know, they by that time, too, they were teenagers. They definitely, from that time on, we didn't do Christmas and Easter and all that stuff, so they knew about that. But um, None it, of them keep Shabbat now? None of your kids? Um, you know, Jonathan will stop doing work on Shabbat. I mean, okay. he, you know, he used well, to come, he used close. to come for Shabbat, you know, when everybody he knew was there and he would, you know, had close relationships with them and then they all left. And, yes. you know, sometimes Greg would um, participate in, in the feast and so forth too. Mm-hmm. And sometimes he doesn't, but he knows I'm always going to. And he's not one of those husbands because I do know women that have had husbands that have been really opposed. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so... Greg has never been that way. So I, I guess I appreciate that. <laughs> mm-hmm, that's good. How about you, Tamara? My husband usually gets home right as the sun's going down. We finish school around noon and then rush around and get as much done as I can. So we eat dinner usually as soon as he comes through the door, practically. I usually have it waiting. I don't want to be still cooking when he gets home. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have dinner together, generally hang out with each other force the kids to come out of their rooms and be with <laughs> each other. Sometimes we'll play games. Sometimes um, we'll even watch a movie together. You say that like it's such I a, know, but like sometimes I, I like, struggle with it. I do sometimes. <laughs> like I'm like, should we be doing this? No. And um, okay. next day I sleep in. <laughs> that's like one of my favorite parts <laughs> and, and then we kind of scrounge around until it's time to leave and you know we long all week for that day to come and for there to be fellowship and that holy convocation you know together with with our shabbat family mm-hmm. and uh, so we're always out the door by one and not home until eight wow and then Matt goes straight to bed because he has to get up at 3.30 in the morning at the mm-hmm. latest. Um, but yeah, so our day is full, but it doesn't feel like work. It feels <clears throat> amazing and refreshing. Like I said, I'm still working on that preparation. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm not ready for Shabbat when it comes, mm-hmm. you know, especially if we've had a bad couple of days with the kids or something, but I do my best. <laughs> um, or being sick. Or being Sometimes sick, or, yeah. or injured, or wrenching it, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> or just generally in a bad mood, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Certain family members. It does happen. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it funny how sometimes the Sabbath triggers some people? Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I won't mention who. Yeah, I, I have a child who <laughs> generally throws a fit in the car mm. on the way to whatever fellowship we're going to. Yeah. No names. No names. No names. Uh, but I yeah. have six of those. <laughs> and you're just like, what's happening? Why are oh, you back Shabbat. there picking a fight? Yeah. It's oh, Shabbat. Spiritual Can warfare. You stop? Yes. Yes. We'll be fine once we get there. <laughs> it always is fine once we get there. But on the way. Oh. Okay, so in our house, well, right now, since we live in school buses in the desert, we do kind of still do what we always have done, sort of. But it looks different now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But before we moved out into our weird life, basically, it goes like this. Always a fancy dinner Friday night Mm -hmm. with wine and candles and flowers, and we're going to make it special. Uh, So we do that. We say the blessings. We bring in the Sabbath. We light candles. We follow this Jewish tradition, even though we're not Jewish, And even though it's a tradition, not a commandment, because it's a wonderful tradition that helps us keep the commandment to set the day apart and make it holy. Mm -hmm. And for us, that was really important that we needed to do something that separated this period of time from the rest of the week. We don't Mm -hmm. light candles for dinner on a Monday. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We don't cook a fancy meal just whenever. So it, it was always this is the special day. The kids looked forward to it. Mm-hmm. So while we're doing our preparations, we always let the kids watch. I have a YouTube playlist for Shabbat, for Rev Shabbat. 
It's got like shaboom. Have you ever heard of shaboom? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They love that. Shaboom, 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 boom, boom. You know, <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, bring it on home. You know, and I, the, kid, the kids are always just Shabbat Shalom. And they would sing the Shabbat song and, you know, and all the things with the kids. And then we'd have our dinner. And, and for us, this whole ritual is also communion. Mm-hmm. We're breaking bread. We're remembering Yeshua. Mm-hmm. So we do the regular traditional Jewish blessings. We light the candles and bring in the Shabbat. I don't do the <clears throat> thing that Jewish women do, you know, with the That's just a habit waving. For me. Yeah, I know, and it's a cool one. I just never got into that habit, so I don't. But we do say, you know, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, mm-hmm. who sanctifies us by his commandments and commands us to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, mm-hmm. and who gave to us Yeshua, the Messiah, to be the light of the world. Mm-hmm. So when mm-hmm. we light the candles, I say that blessing because I'm the oldest woman in our house. <laughs> <laughs> and um, although I have had my daughter-in-law start saying it like when I'm gone, and mm-hmm. apparently she does a good job. Mm-hmm. And we, we bless the wine, we bless the bread. It's so cute. My little grandson, Rhett, has always, we always give the boys milk because there's no way on earth we're giving them juice. Right. Okay, because, I mean... If we want to have a good Sabbath, <laughs> no sugar. Um, but he gets his he gets his little cup and he goes like this, <laughs> and we all hold up our glasses. We say Baruch Atah Yehovah Eloheinu Melech Haolam, and he goes Bere Bere Haga, or whatever it is he says. And, and then we drink, and then everybody says Lahaim, and and we they get so excited and they just love it and then and then the bread and oh my gosh my grandsons love challah becca likes to bake so and she still has an oven in her bus so i think occasionally she makes really small challah loaves mm. but yeah we would bake challah we bless the challah and then we bless the children mm. with the ironic blessing mm. and then the husbands will bless the wives and and it's it's very jewish right mm. And if my mother saw it, she'd probably, you know, start trying to do an exorcism or something. <laughs> but for us, I mean, we like it. It's fun. And we've kind of co-opted their culture. And somebody would probably get mad at us. But, you know, it it, it really does mark the beginning mm-hmm. of the day. Okay. Yeah. So after that, we do watch movies. Mm-hmm. We let the kids watch movies. I mean, this is kind of the day where, within limits... Certainly. We just... People can pretty much do what they want. Obviously, you know, I have my YouTube playlist for the boys, and then I do my own thing, and the and the kids do their own thing. And um, but we always have, you know, hot food, and um, everything's all prepared ahead of time. Now, when Michael was still here, we always did Haftalah, which is the end of Shabbat. It's another candle. There is a Jewish tradition of of smelling sweet spices. Mm-hmm. You know, to represent a sweet week mm-hmm. ahead. Mm-hmm. And we kind of did that, but not entirely. But it was mainly the blessing. We mm-hmm. really liked the blessing in the Siddur, where it talks about, Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches us the difference between the sacred and the profane, the six days of the week and the seventh. There's a few more things, but we just loved that blessing, and so we always did it. <laughs> okay. Okay, Pam. So, I do Shabbat different almost every week now Um, because our lives are really haphazard and we don't have a routine and uh, we don't always have a place to have people and we don't, our lives are just kind of upside down. So, I have developed several Sabbath strategies for the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Most of the time, we light the candles. I try to prepare on preparation day but I'm on a learning curve with a new work situation, and that doesn't always work out. So I make a huge pot of spaghetti, <laughs> and we eat it for dinner and breakfast. And breakfast. <laughs> I, at one point, I was real strict about Sabbath because that's how I was taught. You know, you don't cook at all on Sabbath. And um, we have encountered some health problems where a warm meal and a hot cup of Whatever in the morning is necessary because our life is upside down and inside out. So we're not able to actually order things a lot of times anymore. Mm -hmm. I I really think I'm being prepared for 
when Yeshua comes, what does my Sabbath have to look like for to look like a believer? As I see things coming at us, I'm thinking, what am I going to have to do? What am I going to keep solid? And for us, it's been, so what? The house isn't clean. Yeah, It's Sabbath. I'm mm-hmm. good with that. Yes. Right? <laughs> Me too. And there have been times where there have been so many dishes piled up on the sink because I just flew in the door, and there was no way to plan or prepare mm-hmm. or anything, mm-hmm. that I have to do some dishes so we have something to eat on. <laughs> right? <laughs> So we've been, our circumstances have been so tumultuous the last at least three years Mm -hmm. that the Lord has been really preparing us for tumultuous times. So I'm in a transition of trying to sort out what is necessary and what is not. God says, don't do this or do do this. And I'm thinking those are the things that are really necessary. I struggle every, I've been doing this 30 years, I struggle every week about lighting a fire, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? When you're a mom and you have five or ten kids, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. Do you chain them all down? And (laughs) and that, no. The Sabbath is supposed to be a delight. And it has to be delightful for the children. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a sick kid that needs a hot cup of soup. Is that the ox in the ditch? That's the ox in the ditch. Because mm-hmm. I do the same with my goats, you yeah. know. Well, that's that's not even an ox in a ditch. That is not regular work. That is caring for a creature that's in your stewardship. That's a whole different thing. <laughs> yeah. No, that's entirely different. Mm-hmm. You don't mistreat God's creatures mm-hmm. by starving them or not bringing them water or mm-hmm. not milking them. That's that's That would be hideous mm-hmm. to do that to a creature on the Sabbath. Thank you for listening to Walk Like a Hebrew. If you enjoy this program, please leave a review on our Facebook page or your podcast app. You can find links to the resources mentioned in this episode in the show notes by visiting the link tree in our Instagram bio and on Facebook. Walk Like a Hebrew is a ministry of Roadside Ministries, a faith-based private membership organization. I can now offer tax receipts for any donations made to Roadside Ministries for the podcast. Please email me at sheholdsforth at gmail.com for more information. There are many other ways to support Walk Like a Hebrew, including getting yourself some Walk Like a Hebrew merchandise on eBay or Etsy or subscribing to this show at podhero.com. As always, many, many thanks to Jack Lane for the music. May Yehovah bless you. We'll catch you next time.